Thank you. That's very nice. Look, let me tell you that. Let me tell you. <laughs> They're deranged here tonight. That's, ver that's very good for my ego. Now, how about something for my libido? <laughs> I'm a quart low in my libido this week. <laughs> I'm Johnny Carson, the Smith Barney of comedy. I earn my laughs the old-fashioned way. I earn them. <laughs> this is the, uh... Isn't it funny how an ovation dies into nothing? <laughs> Anyway, this is the uh, Tonight Show, the 60-minute program that comes into your bedroom during foreplay. <laughs> and what you, uh... Really? <laughs> and what you do during Tom Snyder is his problem. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm glad you're in a good mood. I hate to talk about audiences who were here the night before. But last night we had what I... And I hate to use this word. Um... Uh, lowbrow. Yeah. <laughs> It is not easy to stand out here and get laughs when you look out and you see an old lady rotating her dress shields. Grim. <laughs> no, the monologue went so poorly last night, the FBI was going to give me a new identity and relocate me in another state. <laughs> Make me out. Have them stand by tonight also. You want to have some fun after the show? Yeah. Let's yeah. right, say what we do. Let's so all go down to the phone company and shoot the guy who says you can really save money on your phone bill by looking the number up yourself. <laughs> There's some good news and bad news uh -oh. for you tonight. The good news is that President-elect Reagan says he's gonna reduce government waste, cut federal spending, uh, lower inflation, uh, raise defense spending, and cut the federal budget. Now, the bad news is he can't do it unless he's booked on Fantasy Island. <laughs> you know, when Reagan was governor of California, they called him a nine-to-five governor. Apparently, he feels it's better to delegate authority and kind of operate the country like a corporation. Let's just hope it's not Chrysler. <laughs> Imagine a nine-to-five president. Now, what that means is, the Russians call after five on the hotline. <laughs> they, uh, they get a recording that says, Hi, this is Ronnie. Sorry, I'm not here right now. <laughs> but if you're declaring war, please wait for the beep. <laughs> How many of you were in the stock market and sold yesterday? Did you see the stock market? I guess, who, what's the name of the fellow that... Uh, Granville. Apparently has a list of... Um, of customers, and he told them the day before yesterday to sell everything, and the stock market dropped about 24 points yesterday. And I, I don't have him as a broker. I have a great broker, E.F. Schnorr. <laughs> uh, E.F. Schnorr put my life savings into uh, into Guberans. No, they're they're like Krugerans, but they they're Guberans. They're they're filled with chocolate and. Uh, they have a, uh, they have a likeness of Goober from Hee Haw on them. They're called <laughs> Gooberans, yeah. Schnorr called me today, as a matter of fact, and they said, uh, they said, don't worry, Johnny, your money is safe in blue chips. And I said, stocks? And they said, no, we, we picked them up frozen in cow pastures in Montana. <laughs> blue chips. They make... <laughs> Look, they make great paperweights. Don't knock it. Did you see this? President Carter has about, what, another uh, 16 days or 15 days as president. And today he is, uh... Oh, you, you're cruel. Today he was seeking a 22% pay raise for high-level federal officials, including the cabinet and the Congress, and including a 22% pay raise for his own pension. Absolutely. I think, I think Carter's giving us the January surprise we were looking for in October. Uh, took him four years, but the president finally came up with some legislation that Congress agrees with. 22%. Governor Brown was in the news. Our Governor Jerry Brown out here gave the State of the State address today in Sacramento. And Governor Brown said, I quote, California has gotten itself out of a bad space and some good karma is coming down. 
And during the speech, Jerry Brown had a double talk interpreter for the mellow minded. <laughs> You don't hear about much about our lieutenant governor these days, do you? We have Lieutenant Governor Mike Curb out here. The reason you don't, because Jerry Brown is in the state. When he's out of the state, Curb takes over. Curb hasn't been uh, doing too much lately. What he's trying to do, he's trying to sell President Reagan's home in Pacific Palisades to Debbie Boone. <laughs> See, he used to be in the record business and handled... Uh, What? Reaching. That's a reacher, isn't it? Yeah, that was. We got a good show tonight. Yes, we do. Bum, Bum Phillips is with us tonight. Right. Houston Oilers. Yeah. Bum, as you know, was let go by Houston, but uh, he's gotten two job offers. One to coach New Orleans Saints or become the head of programming at NBC. <laughs> And McLean Stevenson is on the show tonight. <laughs> who recently married a lovely girl on our staff here on The Tonight Show, Ginny Fosdick. And Ginny did not know it, but she was shocked. She found out today that they were really married by Tim Conway in disguise. <laughs> so we're not sure if he helped uh, <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to put your horns up yet. I'm not finished. <laughs> oh, yes, right. you are. Right. <laughs> and we have a fine actor, James Wood, is with us tonight. Right. Woods and the mighty Carson Art player. <laughs> but first, do I do this first or do I? No, we're waiting for you. <laughs> I just don't feel it tonight. Don't do it. You've got to do it. <laughs> Why? Well, because America is waiting for it. Plus, it's money. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we'd like to welcome the new Vic Roller with the tough point. <laughs> it lets you go with the flow. First guest tonight. Later on, Bum Phillips, James Woods. Later on, the Mighty Carson Art players are going to present a spoken for the insurance companies of America mm. on the show. But my first guest is McLean Stevenson, and uh, as I mentioned, only about what a month ago, mm -hmm. he uh, well, this would mark his uh, his wedding anniversary. Mary right. Ginny Fosdick of our staff, who's a lovely gal. Would you welcome McLean Stevenson? Son of a gun, uh, you old newlywed, you? Yeah, and they said it wouldn't work. Yeah. You One still month, have that flush, uh, that flush look of a, of a happy group. Of a new group? I yeah. got to tell you something. I'm going to be very candid. I, I have never been as nervous in my life as I am right now. Beneath this incredibly handsome, otherwise casual facade, <laughs> there lurks a huge bowl of jello. Why Now, why tonight? Well, um, you know, I've, see, I've never done this show when I was married. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Now, it's like if you worked, if I was a rotor rooter man and got a good shot on the show for whatever reason, right. right, and just got married, I doubt seriously that my bride would hop in the truck with the snake and the plumber's helper and come along. That's true. And I not only married a lady who works for you, mm -hmm. uh, who I can't get to bed at the 10 o'clock news, must wait up and re-see the show again at 11.30. Aha. Uh -huh. But she's also standing 15 feet away, <laughs> and it's like there she is. Uh, That's Ginny right over there. Yeah, I uh, just I want to be very good for her. You know, I don't want to come out here and be the a silly buffoon person. In other words, you are. Deep. I'm trying to act very grown up, and it's killing me. I see. I just want to go. You know, you I don't wear shorts anymore, and waka waka waka. You, you, you want to be real sophisticated and yeah. smooth now that I you're know. a married person. Yeah. Well, I think that's nice. She's a nice gal. Do you recognize the suit and tie? Mm-hmm. I didn't ask you, Ed. I asked uh, I, John. I recognized it. Well, Ed did. Well, I, uh, I have I seen that before, haven't I? Yes. Well, 
more than once, but one particular time. The night you introduced Jenny Introduced the two of them. Yeah, actually, it's the same suit, same tie, and the well, same shirt. Well, you old romantic guy, you. Aren't I something? Yeah. And the same penny loafers. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're wearing your suit. Yes, my suit. Yeah. Do you know if, uh, I don't know whether you know this or not, because she is with the staff, that I, I get your firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't know that. Well, certainly look, now, looking forward to that, though, at my age. Oh, of course you are. Be 87 years old playing <laughs> kit, catch with a 12-year-old kid <laughs> at your house. Now, you, uh, it's been, uh, you've been single for quite a while, and yeah. um, there are adjustments when you get married. You get used to a certain standard of, of living. You kind of come and go as you want to, and all of a sudden now, you're married. Have you made those little adjustments that one must make when one gets married. I feel like I'm talking I mean, you to my dad or what something. I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is you don't go trolling in the bars anymore. No. You don't go, hi, how are you? No, certainly, and I thank heaven those days are over. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there are some adjustments, although I don't think... Uh, Jenny and I have never really... Uh, there's, there's no problems. It's, it's, yeah. uh, she's quite tall. But Which means that we can drive each other's car without having to adjust the rearview mirror or the seat. Oh, uh, that counts for a lot, I think, in the marriage. Good advantage. Um, the, uh, I, but I, I just, I don't... Well, she snores, which drives me nuts. <laughs> I have, uh... You, these, you these sound like things. you're on the newlywed game all of a sudden? No, I saw I, that show last night. I was, uh, oh. went by it, and I couldn't get by the channel quick enough, and I happened to see the newlywed game. Now, I don't know where they get these cretins who go on that show. <laughs> they, will, they will say anything yeah. about their, their spouse, the most embarrassing thing in front of television. Yeah. You know, to win a set of luggage. I, 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 Part of your body do you admire best about Fred? And the MC goes... <laughs> and she holds up her placard and says, his knees. And he goes, my knees! <laughs> I mean, these are really brilliant people they got there. Have you seen that? But that's what I feel like all of a sudden. I know. I, well, there was a time she in my You life. just told me she snores. I know, and I feel embarrassed, but I do hope I get the luggage. <laughs> I, I see. Well, just go to the commercial. Okay, I'll go to the I'll commercial. To we'll do a commercial, up. and we'll, he'll calm down, folks, and we'll come back to the <laughs> married fellow in a moment. <laughs> We're talking with the newlywed McLean Stevenson from Los Angeles. <laughs> yes. No, I'm kidding you about this, but I know what you're going through. Lots of things to do now. Well, I'm going through great you stuff. You were living I in what, a little life. apartment or a house, or now do you have to Oh, boy, relocate? that's... Uh, okay, when uh, about four months before Ginny and I got married, I right. bought a house. Good. Yeah, a uh, sort of a, a country-type house out in the country, and not terribly big, and in need of some repair and a lot of decorating. But I figured between the swap meet and goodwill, I could handle it. <laughs> was that one of those houses uh, where you, you read the ads and it says, great house for man, handy with tools? Yeah, sure. right. It was... Uh, you know you're in trouble. When I yeah. drove up with the blue-haired lady with the big Cadillac with the gardenia on the aerial, the real estate lady, uh, she said, this one's got real curb appeal, but it's a fixer-upper. A fixer-upper, yeah. I said. So I paid what I thought was a lot of money for it, and uh, I planned to sink close to five grand into the sucker fixing it up. Yeah, wow. I was going to do a lot. Really renovate it, huh? Yeah, really go through it from top to bottom. No, I was just going to put some shag rugs and some, you know, cardboard closets up and, and start living. Uh, and I kept the apartment, thank God, so that I'd have a place to uh, work out of, as they say, while they were doing the renovating. Uh -huh. And uh, then uh, Ginny and I ran away and got married. And Ginny had just bought a condominium which is a little bit, well, it, it's a good investment. It's a little bit like living in a granola box. It's kind of <laughs> filled with a lot of fruits and nuts, and the rest are flakes. <laughs> so you, you didn't well, cotton to that, huh? That's certainly not an indictment of my bride. It just did, happens to be one of those uh, West Los Angeles places that they, uh, unbeknownst to the people living in it, converted it one night from apartments to condominiums. You woke up the next morning and you were condominiums. There you are. So we are actually living in the condo, as they say. Mm -hmm. and I'm still using my office as a closet. We have the longest walk-in closet. It's being two and a half miles away from where she lives. A little awkward in the morning to run down in your jockey shorts to find a pair of pants to wear, yes, but, but that's... <laughs> we'll work it out. The house we are going to redo. I had... 
I had really planned. Have you flown recently? Well, I mean, it does have something to do with what I'm saying, so yes, I'll get on yeah. with it. Yeah. Uh, I can remember on the days... You want to know exactly when I flew? Is that important? No, or? no, no. Yep. But I can remember flying when, when, when you get a little uh, a throw up bag and a little brochure that you could buy a uh, rubber balloon 747 and luggage tags, and that's all. Now you can decorate your home with the catalog they put in there. Right. Have you seen that? We, on the airlines, you mean? Yeah. 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 With the furniture and stuff, right? I plan to order some of that kind of stuff. Oh, from the airline catalog. So I figured for about five grand, I'd have this thing looking real good. Then I took Jenny up there, my bride, and uh, we're probably going to put close to five hundred thousand in that. <laughs> uh, I had uh, freshen the house up. Yeah, just freshen it up mm -hmm. a touch here and there. I was going to have a very small kitchen. The kitchen now, when we're through with it, will be as large as the house, so we will be adding on, as well, they say. That's an important part of the, of the home, is the kitchen. Well, it's interesting. When I was single, uh, the guy that uh, I had an architect who had, uh, well, he wasn't full-fledged. He'd been at, I think, Caltech Nights for three weeks. Bless you. Uh, I had a pickup truck and a slide rule, and so I had complete confidence in his ability. He was just going to put some walk-in closets in. And... Uh, I fired him immediately uh -huh. because uh, he thought it would be foolish to spend more than ten grand. Uh, we're we're really going to do a job of yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah, it should be ready about eighty four. Eighty four. <laughs> Are you good at those things around the house? I mean, uh, not really. You mean am I a good fixer yeah, upper? I love would. to I love to try, but I generally I will accomplish what I set out to do, but I will screw up everything else so bad that a yeah. simple job like redoing a light switch will end up costing me 1500 because I've torn the entire wall out. <laughs> Better to pay somebody and watch them yeah. do that because mm -hmm. they do it skillfully. It's and... funny to watch these guys do their work. We have uh, 35 Hispanic-speaking people who really do work. Right. And then the foreman, and uh, he has four guys that oversee all the stuff. Every time I drive up there, they're playing cards or reading s the sports page. And the minute they hear my car, which has a bad muffler, about right. a block down the street. They hear this, <laughs> and I'm shifting gears in my little car. They're busy when you arrive, eh? The nails are really flying, and those suckers are just wailing away. And the other day, I drove down, got out of the car, walked back, and they were all playing cards. <laughs> now, what the heck? It's only $55 an hour each. Now, you, uh... <laughs> now, you eloped, therefore you missed, uh, the usual kind of bridal parties and things that are held. So this could leave you rather short of, say, uh, cups and saucers. Now, being a bachelor, and having been a bachelor times in my life. Yeah. Well, no, I wasn't. Several times in my life. <laughs> Very often, you do not end up with the select pieces of, of, of cookware. Yes. Uh, uh, when the final spit right. is made, you get the colander, you know, and a spatula that looks as bent out of shape. And yes. You navigate with that stuff for about six months until you yeah. lock onto some girl who starts bringing the, uh, stuff to your house. I got... <laughs> I That's got true. It. That's anybody has been through that. You end up with some mangled knives and forks, you know, that have fallen into the garbage disposal. Yeah. I got custody of an electric blanket with no cord, two pieces of an laminal cookware, and uh, a complete set of Melmac. Aha. Melmac is nice, though. Yeah, it is. Except I hope you're real happy. I am. I'm delightfully yeah. happy. And you I look thank good. you for introducing us, by the way. You were responsible. I remember for that, that night. And we will send you the first board. <laughs> we're going to take a break. We're going to be right back after this. Stay where you are. insurance industry is a frequent target of criticism because of what is seen as bureaucratic inefficiency, a hard-nosed attitude of local agents whenever policyholders inquire about a claim. The Tonight Show has invited a representative of the insurance industry to respond to these charges and to explain company procedures. We switch you now live to the headquarters of the Insurance Industry of America and its spokesman, G. Walter Schneer. <laughs> How do you do? I'm the official spokesman for the National Organization of Insurance Companies. That, of course, stands for Salesman for Health, Auto, Fire, and Theft, or as we call it, Shaft. <laughs> as you can see here, our industry symbol is an eagle. And you know what he's clutching in his mighty talons? You. <laughs> and if you've had any dealings with us, you know where he's clutching you. Now, many people... Many people say we're greedy, unscrupulous, incompetent, and uncaring. Well, I'm proud to say tonight that we're all of those things and more. Let's face it, you can't make any money by giving it away. 
Just look around. Who owns the tallest buildings in every major city? It ain't Mother Teresa. <laughs> Often people ask me to translate insurance terminology. They say, Mr. Schneer, what's the difference between assigned risk, whole life, double indemnity, and no fault, decreasing term liability? Let me put it this way. We don't know. <laughs> Now, much of your insurance man's busy day is spent answering personal correspondence with policyholders and trying to meet their individual needs. For example, here's a letter right in front of me from a 91-year-old lady from Lake Delco, Florida, who says she has a whole life policy. She's paid $58.19 a month, every month, since March of 1909. <laughs> now she wants to redeem her policy for its cash value. That's a smart move. Our payment department has, department has computed the cash value of her policy, and I'm going to send it out to her today. <laughs> yeah, right there. Right there. Remember, remember insurance is people. If you sign with us, you'll get our good hands. And remember, even when we cancel you, you'll still get our good finger. <laughs> now, Some of our detractors, <laughs> some of our detractors have charged that we use the requirement of as a physical examination as a means of screening out senior citizens from purchasing life insurance because we consider them poor risks. Now, that's a misconception. Naturally, we require a minimal standard physical examination. As a matter of fact, right back here, we have an 87-year-old gentleman who's taking one of our physicals right now. Another 32 miles, and we might just give you a policy. <laughs> Excuse me, just a minute. <laughs> well, it looks like he's looks like he's beneficiary city, as we say in the insurance game. That's that's tough luck. Another 31 and a half more miles, and he would have had our policy at poor risk rates, of course. Now, you may be wondering, and again, you may not, but you may be wondering <laughs> what happens if you get in an automobile accident. How, we, how do we go about settling your claim? Well, let's take a look here at our claims adjustment simulator, and we'll, we'll reenact an actual case from our file. Now, Mr. Lyle Cernut of New Voyeur, Pennsylvania, signed up for our blue ribbon coverage. That includes collision, theft, un uninsured motorist, and medical. What we in the insurance field call the works. Now, Mr. Sanute never had an accident, not even a parking ticket. One day, he was motoring down the street here, came to an intersection, came to a complete stop. At the stop sign, Mr. Sanute looked both ways. Now, he is struck by a disabled... <laughs> He's struck by a disabled 747. <laughs> now, what did we pay to this man? Not a penny. <laughs> you see, Mr. Salute made one mistake. He didn't buy flight insurance. <laughs> sounds like our hotline insurance. <laughs> Hello, if you got a piece of the rock... It, uh, don't you slow, slow down. You say you're calling from clear across the country in Bangor, Maine. Uh, your house is completely engulfed in flames and your, your policy was destroyed. Uh, what's your name? Uh, you don't have to worry, Mr. Uh, Ropespierre. I think I've got a copy of your policy right here, if you just hang on a second. <laughs> Ropespierre, I think I've got some bad news for you. Yeah, seems like a spark from your roof just blew in our office. <laughs> Burn, burned up your policy. We, we don't have any record of having any dealings with you at all. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to your garden hose. Right, ciao. <laughs> now, <laughs> one way... You people in the office here kind of like that. One way, <laughs> one way we save you money is by investigating insurance frauds. Let me give you an illustration of what I mean. <laughs> now, 
This, this poor man here is a foreman at one of our leading factories, and he claims, because of an already weakened heart, to have fallen 87 feet. Now, let's test him and see whether his claim is legitimate. Well, now the heartbeat is a little weak. Let's, uh, let's check that out. Yeah! Holy shit! It seems that was a legitimate claim. <laughs> and we would have paid it except for one small thing. <laughs> that was a that was a suicide. <laughs> Nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, I've got a busy day. Hey, I got a lot of policies to counsel. Hope I've been a help to you. <laughs> My next guest. Thank you, Doc. Well, right back. My next guest is a very gifted young actor you've seen in a lot of things. He's soon going to be in two major motion pictures, one called Eyewitness and Fast Walking. Would you welcome James Woods? <laughs> Good to see you again. It's like a theme show. We all got married recently. I didn't know that till today. Yeah. They said, you know, McLean's on, and I said, yeah, he married Jenny about a month ago. Then they said, you are recently married since four we've months. seen each other yeah, for four, four months. months. Yeah, I can give you a lot of hints. <laughs> I'm an all hand at this stuff. I was just talking to Jenny backstage, and she said, look at that ring on you. It's so big. And I said, yeah. I said, she wanted to stick a Michelin tire in there so nobody got any ideas, you know? And she said, I got the same thing, you know? And look at his. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? It's like, like the dew line. You both are wearing. Major Almost. wedding rings. Major, uh, major commitment here. Oh, when they really want to let people know that you are married, yeah. out comes the yeah. large... They want to keep the rats at bay. You know large what I mean? <laughs> Has this changed your life a lot? Yeah, it really has. Yeah. You don't, you, it's so different from any other experience. I mean, yes. it's a commitment because it's so official, in a way, and you find out that, like... Remember all those things your mother used to tell you when you were a kid? You know, those little things you say, ah, ma, please, will you? And then yeah. you find out it's true. You know, you right. got to save your money, which I never did, and she was right about that. And if you want to get serious about a woman, spend three hours with her in the kitchen, and then you know. You know what really? I mean? Because you're in a small space with major implements of destruction, and you know what the relationship is about. I said, Ma, how about the bedroom? She says, turn out the lights, get under the sheets, they're all the same, but you get in that kitchen, you know the difference, you know? That was your mother's advice. Yeah, huh? well, I think it was my mother, yeah. Yeah. Did your mother ever give you any advice? What, what kind of advice did she ever give you about, about marriage? Not really. No? Any that I can remember. Really? Uh, my, uh... Well, my father-in-law one time said it's very important the night before you go to sleep to kiss each other before you go to sleep. Never go to bed mad. That, that, that's true, actually. It's like uh, uh, hit we have not gone to bed in six years. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say I shouldn't have said that. Either. That's a little humor there. But you see what happens? You get married, and all of a sudden you think, now I got to watch what I say because all yeah. of a sudden you have. I mean, you know, you're. When, you're, when you come into this world, you're, you're Irish, you're French, whatever, you get right. married, all of a sudden you're Sicilian. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All of a sudden it's like, I got a woman who's, uh, whose integrity I have to respect, and uh -huh. you draw that kind of line, and all of a sudden you become very aware. I mean, you can't come out here and sleaze around. Now, the yeah. basis of, you know, see, we got a dull show here, because all of a sudden we got all these married guys, right? Yeah. And, and all of a sudden you have to say, I can't make jokes, and the basis of humor, of course, is total sleazery, so yeah. we're, we're stuck, you know? Well, you can make jokes, <laughs> if they don't take no, it too no, no, serious. No, but true. it's important you don't go to bed mad. Absolutely. If you have a fight. Absolutely. But sometimes you do. Well, I think that... It, I, Are you I, quick to anger? I am. Um, I used to be quick to anger, but what I have found, even in the, the few months we've been, uh -huh. uh, we've been married and the time we went together before, that what has happened is that you, when you've made a commitment to the future with someone you love, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you think, now, am I going to drag this on for four months like I used to, or eight months, or four days, or whatever? Or am I going to say, look, I've got a whole lifetime with this person. Why waste the next precious few hours being angry? Because you know what? You're never really that angry about what you think you're angry about. Yeah. All you have to do is work it out and communicate. And when you communicate, it's terrific. Mm -hmm. And I found, uh, some, when I was single, so many people used to give me all these theories about things. <laughs> so, uh, give, uh, all the single guys would say, you know, I can never find a woman, you know. Married guys I've talked to have been married a long time. I'd say, you know, I don't know why I'm not happy or anything else. And I finally figured out that it's, it's 
and I hope this doesn't sound too pompous, but it's really, honest to God, right under your nose. It really is. You, yeah. If you want to know, if I were Robert Blake sitting out here philosophizing, you right. know what I mean, about things, I would honest to God say you have to turn around, and everybody, there's 60 million people watching the show, to the 30 million to wear the pants in the family, or at least, right. I don't know. That's uh, supposed uh, to be out now. You yeah. Nobody's supposed to wear the pants. Nobody wears. Well, okay, the 30 million wear the jock straps in the family. I just want to say, oh, if I you want to be happy, you know. <laughs> Just turn to the one right there, you know? The one you're with, the one you love, that's the one that'll get you through it. And it's amazing the support you can get from somebody you love who's committed to you. And people are avoiding it all the time. They're yeah. avoiding the essential issues of life right now. I think we've been, for the past decade, we were so turned around, you know, with everything. And all of a sudden now, uh, you realize that those old values are really gonna save us. You sound like you're coming unglued. You've only, <laughs> been, totally <laughs> you've only been four months and you're, you're manic already. Looks like this is the future. <laughs> Around. You'll find yourself in a few months talking slowly and not being so, you know. Well, it just amazes me, you know. I mean, these, these, all these old values all of a sudden really work, you know. Well, the, the advice is always easy to give, you know. Yeah. Communication, you must have tolerance and understanding. Yeah. Those are all nice things. But, but sometimes it gets to the point where your tolerance gets a little thin and your patience gets just a little hairy. And then it's, mm, you want to go to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> you're back to Jackie Gleason. You're going to the moon, Alice. Wow. <laughs> Now, I know you're not supposed to do that, but there are times. Now, that, there's nothing wrong with arguing either, you see. But oh, no, you've got to argue. You must have a fight occasionally. I don't mean a fight with uh, lethal weapons. No, no, yeah, no chain mail. No, no, I don't mean that kind of a fight or hitting. But I mean you must have verbal exchanges once in a while, because if you don't, yeah. it all, you store it away in there. Yeah, and absolutely. then it can take the littlest thing and then to <laughs> set one off. Like, where have you been? <laughs> Knock my watch off. Now. I don't know why I'm giving you this advice. I'm, I have not. It's not worked well for me. I'm, but I'm, I'm a being. Of, I'm being realistic. So you're still in that uh, honeymoon stage where everything. Hey, you know. Yeah, but it's, it's spreading out to the rest of my life. I'm, I, oh, I, I'm back to simple values. I'm, I'm subscribing to the Whole Earth Catalog. I've decided this is it. Enough's enough. I want to buy a tent, live out in the woods. That's it. Oh. The, the, the simple values of life. You know, you know all the stuff that's been going on that has I been can see my wife in a tent out in the woods. <laughs> I think I saw her in a tent. No. Can you see Joanna in a tent out in the woods? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. With a Cuisinart and a little generator in the back. Red and green striped tent. <laughs> out there with a... Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for that. I know I'm going to pay for that when I go home. See, see, my, see, my wife has a good sense of humor. She knows I'm in the humor game. <laughs> and things that I say here, she will say, I know you did that to get a laugh, and you mean nothing against me personally, and it's going to cost. You know, <laughs> it's not what she just said in the green room, actually. She had yeah. quite, a different view of, quite a different view of things, you know? Uh, what do you do if you get angry? Do you just walk away? Uh, I tend, well, because I'm an actor and because mm -hmm. emotion is my game. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Uh, and because I, I tend to uh, get a lot of words into a little space. Yes, you, you only, do. Because you only ever give me one segment, so I've become, you know, a It's the same thing tonight, so get them all in there. <laughs> I, I get, uh, I get practice. I, I just sort of say a lot of things that you can't say on TV, so there's no point in telling you about, well, anything about saying. this. And then she says them all back and then punches me. At which point I kind of, <laughs> and she punches me hard. I have this whole theory about getting bone cancer if you get punched in the same space yeah, all the course. time. Yeah, of course. And, as soon as, and then uh, that sort of sobers me right up and you start to think again, you know? You start yeah. to think when you get married somehow because you got somebody else to think for, you know? That's right. And, and also you get it back to you and you say, you say something before you used to say it to yourself and there was nobody to correct you. And then they'll say it back to you. Yeah, and then they say it back to you and you go, but that sounds ridiculous. She said, well, that's what you just said, so, you know, straighten up and fly right, kid. It seems like it's working out very well <laughs> so far. Have you had a fight yet, McLean? It's... Well, we had a fight. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't mean you no. two. I mean... <laughs> not a good one. I, I have not met my in-laws. And, you haven't uh, met your in-laws yet. Well, no, I, I have always contended that a man without a mother-in-law is like a polar bear without a set of golf clubs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I've got to do a commercial here. I'll, I'll do this. We'll be right back to Newlyweds. <laughs> My uh, next guest is one of the... I'm glad he's here tonight. Come Phillips. He's one of the most outstanding and colorful coaches that the NFL has had in years, and Bum Phillips did a remarkable job the past three years for the Houston Oilers. He brought the team into the playoffs three times, and his dismissal last week came as, as quite a shock to everybody. But I understand he's got some plans for the future. Would you welcome Bum Phillips? <laughs> Right. 
<laughs> Good to see you. Now, before we start talking, Bum, we had a Craig Roberts, a sportscaster, I guess from uh, our NBC affiliate in Houston, called this afternoon, the station, saying that Mrs. Phillips, your wife, had called him and would like Bum to call home because she doesn't know when he's arriving in Los Angeles, where he's staying, or when he's leaving. <laughs> I usually take her with me because she's too ugly to kiss goodbye. <laughs> can twice in one week if you keep that up. <laughs> Your wife's got a sense of humor, obviously. Yeah, she does. She puts up with me. Yeah, that guy you? there talks faster than I can listen. <laughs> I'm telling you. What? You know, being a coach, uh, whether it's professional or in collegiate sports, has got to be a very hairy job because you did a remarkable job with a ball club, brought them to the playoffs three times, and all of a sudden, they say you're out. Now, <laughs> they meant it, too. Yeah, I guess they did. <laughs> did that come as a surprise to you? <laughs> More of a shock than yeah. a surprise. I thought I was going down there to renegotiate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out that way. But, you know, that's that's life. That's the owner's prerogative. And right. I'm, I'm not that bitter about it. I, I'm a little uh, upset about the way they did it, but not the fact yeah. that they did it, because that's their right. I don't care. That happens I'll in all professional job. activities. Sure, sure. But I guess they feel that if you're not a winner all the time, but everybody can't be a winner every year. There have to be somebody who comes in second or not make the playoffs. They're just uh, two kinds of coaches. Yeah. That's them that's been fired and them that's going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been both. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose during the season, you, you never know where you, exactly where you stand, right? Not unless you're on top. <laughs> yeah, unless you're on top <laughs> all the time. No, you did a remarkable job with the club, though. We were pleased with it. They had time. some really sensational games. Have you made any plans yet? I, I read the sports pages today that there was uh, rumors you might be going to the Saints or talking with them? I talked with John, and, and uh, you know, obviously I would like to have the job, but yeah. obviously he's the owner. Sure. And you've got to go through the owner. Yeah. And we've had, you know, we've had a lot of conversation about it, and I think we can get together, but uh, it remains to be yeah. seen. They've still got some more candidates they're going to interview for the job. And Is it more of a challenge for a coach to go in and take a team that uh, has not done well? Uh, I mean, every coach would like to go in and take a team that, you know, is right on top. But yeah. to, to rebuild a team would be a challenge, I would think, for a coach. Yeah, I, I, that's why I think Don Shula is probably the best football coach that I know of. Yeah. He took Baltimore coach and won with them, then he went to Miami and he won with them. So uh, we won this year and last year and the year before. I'd like to have the challenge of trying to make it with another right. team. I'd like to see if I can prove it twice. There, there's a lot of controversy about should they have instant replay. The fans at home sometimes get a better look at a play than the people there at the game because they shoot it from three or four angles. Sometimes they play it so many times that they, sh they should stop. Yeah. And you will see calls. I think all in all the officials do a fairly remarkable job. I, I do too. Of, no, uh, I really making do. I the good think, calls. Yeah, I, I don't... And wouldn't the instant replay slow the game down? Everybody could say probably. on every call. Probably. Let's play that again and it would consume... The problem with it is if you had the shot showing the guy going out of bounds whether his feet was in or out was immaterial, but over when the play started you'd have a guy holding. Right. Now, do you do you call this one and call it back, or do you go back and penalize them for holding that you didn't see, the officials didn't call? Right. There's a lot of problems with uh, instant replay, but, you know, if it helped me win a game, I'd vote for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, huh? Yeah. Um, somebody said that your your mother gets upset if she thinks you're using bad language out Ooh. there. I guess yeah. she, one never gets away from his mother, right? Uh, <laughs> does, does she get upset if she thinks you're uh, yeah. being a little ab abrasive? Yeah, I made a little statement in the Dome last year that uh, she didn't approve of and, and couldn't talk oh, about I it. I remember that. They had yeah. that on... Uh... I just thought it was a good thing to say, you know. Hell, there's 70,000 people there. They wanted to hear something positive. They didn't want to hear say, we're going to try harder. So, so you said I told them we're going to kick the door in. And, and you called the door uh, very specific <laughs> terms, what kind of a door it was, right? Yeah, yeah. And you heard from Mom, huh? Oh, yeah. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. You, I, I was reading a small book of, of things you've said before, and you said something about one of the toughest jobs of being a coach was telling a player that he was cut, was cut or no, was no longer going to make the team or he was or his skills had diminished and you had to let him go that yeah. must be tough yeah because you you know you're not only cutting a player you're cutting his wife and his family his kids and everything you're cutting his whole life out and that's what makes it so doggone difficult right and that's why i felt like it was so important that when it come my time to get cut that i take it the same way i expect a player to take it right yeah. well that's good good philosophy it's a tough business here yeah, yeah it's a tough business You must have an understanding wife because you travel a lot, and when you're coaching a professional team, or even college, I guess, you spend 
tremendous amount of hours away from home, right. watching game films and so forth. Is she pretty understanding on that score? Yeah. Do you like yeah. which one? Does she travel with, uh, with no, you when you go out of... No, she doesn't travel with us a whole lot because it's so much business. You get to a town and you, by the time you get there, you've got a meeting plan, you've got to practice, and then you come back and you have uh, a supper, and then you have a team meeting, and then it's bed check, and then you get up the next morning, and it's... Uh, chapel service and right. you know first thing you know you're playing again and it's just right. not really a good good opportunity for a woman to travel around and be with her husband so right. if she can just go sit in the hotel room she like that well it'd be a hell of a trip right <laughs> <laughs> it's always picky picky yeah. picky right they want to go out and have fun don't want to sit in that room you've told this story so many times but how did the the term bum come about. That's not your real name, of course. No. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange name. O-A-I-L. If you can pronounce it, you have it. O-E-L? O-E-L. O-E-L. Like I had a W in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, and nobody could pronounce it, and that's why the name came up. My sister stammered. My older sister, Adrena, stammered and couldn't uh, say brother. And really and truly, it's a, it's a truth. And, you know, I don't mind the name bum as long as you don't put a U in front of it. It's yeah, all right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's nice to have you here and meet you tonight. Sure. And uh, you've given us a, you've given us a lot of great moments in football, and I think I know where you're headed, and I wish you great luck. Thank you. I hope you Appreciate come back it. and see us again. Right and to the two honeymooners, <laughs> I suppose uh, you and McLean are running home to a nice hot cooked meal, right? <laughs> We're going bowling. Actually. Sit around the house, <laughs> a little can of beer, and watch the TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tomorrow night, we've got Burt Reynolds with us, Argus Hamilton, and the Doobie Brothers. Tomorrow night. Thank you. We'll see. You. I'm humbled by that applause.